The vast majority of sock yarns are number one yarns, but I have found one that is number two, Magic Stripes by Lion Brand. They don't look very different, but it does make something of a gauge difference to your socks and also a density difference to the fabric. Here's a quick review of what makes a sock yarn a sock yarn. Generally, they're made of superwash wool with some nylon or polyamide or lycra content. This one has nylon. That extra content makes the memory better and the yarn stronger than plain wool. The superwash feature means that the socks can be washed many times without shrinking or felting. Generally, I do find that fit and durability is enough better with real sock yarn to invest in it. I've explained how in other movies, when I'm making myself socks on the 60 stitch cylinder, I add run along lycra to beef up the yarn a little bit and pull it in a little bit because I like the fit and the feel of the fabric better. When using the 60 stitch cylinder, I don't necessarily find that necessary with number two sock yarn because the fabric density is naturally greater. I was concerned that there wouldn't be enough yardage to make all the ladies' sizes of socks, but I've done a quick mathematical estimate based on the ones I did make, and it looks as though there will be. But for the two largest sizes, you will be cutting it close, and it might be a good idea to have an alternate yarn that coordinates on hand. You could do the hem tops and the toes and heels with that and stretch your supply. In the three largest sizes, I very much doubt that there would be enough yardage to be fussy about beginning the yarn at the same place in the color repeat every time. These are at present just off of the machine, and they look fine. They still feel a touch loose to me, but washing in hot water should fix me right up. So here comes the pattern so you can make some yourself. Details about the various skills, knitting and hanging the hem, knitting the tubular part of the leg, then the heel, followed by the tubular part of the foot, finishing with the toe knitted just like the heel, and scrapping off, are all skills covered in several other movies, including the complete pattern for number one yarn, but each of those particular skills has a whole movie devoted to it so that you can really study it if you need to. They're all in my Circular Sock Machine playlist so that this time we can just focus on the numbers. As usual, we begin in waist yarn, then transition to the main yarn. My waist yarn is white, my main yarn is blue at the beginning. Knit 20 rows and then hang the hem. After the hem, I knit 50 rows for a lady's sock, so that is what is allowed for in this pattern, but of course you may adjust that. However, keep in mind that if you adjust for more rows, you are eating into a rather limited yarn supply to make a pair of socks. Using only 30 of the needles, we short row in until 10 are in work, then back until all 30 are in work, and then begin knitting in the round again for the foot. And that's where you actually need a pattern. For these socks, I leave the stitch size adjustment dial the same setting as I use for number one socks, but I get a different gauge of 8.89 rows per inch. If that is exactly the gauge you get, you may knit the number of rounds shown in this chart after the heel and before the toe. Here's how this chart works. Down the far left, size is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or 10. After the period, the length in inches of a foot of that size is given. And in the right column is the number of rounds to knit between toe and heel. If that's not what you got, we need to adjust your number of rounds a little bit, but it's not difficult. Let's use size seven as an example. The foot is nine inches long. Now we take your actual number of rows per inch. In this case, we'll just say it was 9.1, close to mine, but not identical, and multiply it by the nine inch length of the foot. The result is 81.9 total rows needed down the length of the foot but the toe and the heel have already contributed 20 rows each, so we need to subtract 40 from our 81.9, and we get 41.9 rounds to knit. Clearly, it would silly to knit 9 tenths of a round for the purposes of a sock, so we round to the nearest number 
and knit 42. Then we scrap off, finish the toes, possibly wash the socks before wearing them, and we're ready to go. I always knit my first round of waist yarn with exquisite care because where we changed yarns, it's awfully easy to drop a stitch. It's not the end of the world if we do, but let's try not. For your fit to be really accurate, you've got to have a really accurate row gauge. The absolutely best thing to do is to wash and dry your swatch before measuring. If you just can't be that patient, at the very least, let your swatch relax for a while because we put a lot of weights on the sock machine and the knitting responds to that weight till it has a chance to relax. Lion Magic Stripe sock yarn is unfortunately discontinued. But there is still a good bit of it around, and it does knit well on these machines. The same pattern should work quite well for other number two sock yarns if you're able to find them. 